Let's wrap up this video series by summarizing the key ideas by filling in the blanks. So why don't you pause the video and try to fill in the blanks. Uh, so how do you draw the components of a vector? We, w we went over two methods. One method was to draw a right triangle. And in that method, um, the components are the legs and the uh, overall vector is the hypotenuse. The other method is to draw a rectangle. And in that method, the components are the sides of the rectangle and the overall vector is the diagonal of the rectangle. Now these two approaches by themselves, these two wouldn't tell you what the directions of the, uh, the components are. You remember you have to put arrows on the components. So here's the basic rule that we saw that uh, works for putting the arrows on the components. Since the components represent the overall vector, wherever a component arrow, uh, wherever the head of a component arrow overlaps, uh, well, um, the uh, head of each component arrow should overlap with uh, a head of an overall vector, or a tail of a component arrow should overlap with the tail of the overall vector. Well, anyway, we did a bunch of examples of that. Um, each non-zero component has two parts, a plus or a minus sign, which represents its direction, and a magnitude. And we discussed that the plus or the minus sign is just as important as the magnitude. Include a plus sign in front of your positive components so that you'll remember to put the negative sign in front of your negative components. Um, so what is a magnitude? That's a number that's always positive or zero, never negative. Now how do you handle what if a vector is parallel or anti-parallel to the x-axis? Then you would not use the right triangle method or the rectangle method. Instead, um, you would just say that there's the y component is zero. And if the vector is parallel to the x-axis, then the x component is positive. And if it's anti-parallel to the x-axis, the x component is negative. And the magnitude of the x component is the same as the magnitude of the overall vector. Well, that's kind of a lot of words to describe, but um, hopefully when we did examples, you saw that this was pretty simple. And you would use a similar pattern when a vector is parallel or anti-parallel to the y-axis. So in, in these cases, you don't use the, triangle, the right triangle or the rectangle methods. Now, how about um, if you are uh, given the overall vector? Oh, how about if you're given the components, how do you draw the overall vector? Well, it's basically the same idea as up here. There's a right triangle method or a rectangle method. And again, in the right triangle method, the components are the legs and the overall vector is the hypotenuse. And in the rectangle method, the components are the sides of the rectangle and the overall vector is the diagonal. And again, how do you figure out the direction of the overall vector? Um, well, the overall vector head would be on top of the head of a component, or the overall vector tail would be um, overlapping with the tail of a component. When you add vectors, you do not add their magnitudes. Instead, you add their components. That's one reason why it was important for us to learn these methods for working with components. Continuing with our summary, fill in the blanks. And what I'd like you to write down here is just what do each of these symbols mean? What do each of these symbols mean? This is our symbol for an overall vector. And remember that this symbol can only be described by both a direction and a magnitude, not, ju ju not just by a magnitude by itself. By the way, keep in mind that in your textbook, they might use this symbol with an arrow, or they might just write the letter A in boldface. In your textbook, they might write the symbol for an overall vector using an arrow or an A in boldface. Um, this is the symbol for the direction of the overall vector, and this is the symbol for the magnitude of the overall vector. And then this would be the symbol for a x component. Remember, the x component is described by a sign and a magnitude. Don't leave off the plus or minus sign. Here's the symbol for the direction of the component, and here's a symbol for the magnitude of the component, and similarly for the y components. Um, your textbook might not use special symbols for directions, but I think these are pretty straightforward. Um, and your textbook might not use special symbols for magnitudes of the components, but we saw that when you're breaking vectors into components using SOHCAHTOA, it really is quite useful to have special symbols for the magnitudes, because SOHCAHTOA deals with magnitudes, not with the complete component. Um, your textbook will use these symbols of uh, uh, an uh, arrow to indicate a vector or boldface, and no boldface and no arrow indicates the magnitude of the overall vector. And we also saw how do you describe the direction of the overall vector. Usually we describe the direction of an overall vector using an angle. 
like 54 degrees or 62 degrees and a picture that shows where the angle is. Sometimes the direction is simpler and you can describe the direction of the overall vector with a word like right or left or up or down. Okay, so remember that the skills of uh, breaking vectors into components and then building up the overall vector from the components, remember that those skills are supposed to be boringly easy. So if you're still having some trouble with this, these uh, skills, you should, uh, there should be plenty of extra practice problems in your textbook. So now would be a good time to do some extra practice problems in your textbook to, to practice the skills we went over in this video series until you get to the point where these skills are boringly easy. Did you find this video to be helpful? If so, you can support the videos by making a monthly pledge of $1 or more at my Patreon page. You can visit my Patreon page by clicking the link on the screen or by using the link in the video description box. Thank you.